The Shocking Truth About Sexuality in the 1950s in America In comparison to what it was like in the 1950s, the United States of America of today is a drastically different place to live. The America that was conservative in 1950 gives way to the America that is liberal now, which is a very different America. People were afraid to come out about their sexual orientation, whether they were gay or lesbian. The concept of sexuality implies that there is more to it than simply determining one's gender identification. Rather, it's all about coming into one's own. Keeping this in mind, let's examine what the meaning of human sexuality was in the United States in the year 1950 and assess whether or not it was startling at the time. The Study That Revealed the Truth About Human Sexuality and Helped People Accept It Alfred Kinsey published the results of his sociological investigation on American sexuality in 1953. He focused on the need for scientific sex research without moral connotations or labeling of normal or bad behavior. His investigation shows a variety of intriguing facts, such as the 50% of girls who engage in premarital sex, which was utterly unaccepted in society at the time. Kinsey also discovered that sex with males did not cause as many orgasms in women as it did in same-sex interactions. He further suggested that because heterosexual sex outside of marriage was so socially taboo, it could be the root of gay conduct. Each of these conclusions was contentious, particularly in a social setting where sex wasn't widely accepted. The public's response to his conclusions is more fascinating than his own results, as shown by the letters Outrage Lady sent to popular periodicals to express their rage that such a report had been published. The women expressed worries in one letter that kids would read the study and start to doubt their morals. There was even a chance that Kinsey was promoting the normalcy of sex and the discussion of it by exposing what people were actually doing as opposed to enforcing social norms. Last but not least, the woman disputed the claim that 50% of women engaged in premarital sex and attributed that to Kinsey's desire. The Inhumane Treatment of Homosexuals in the Year 1950 the 1950s were a dangerous time for people who did not conform to society's legally sanctioned norms regarding gender or sexuality. This was especially true inside the United States. The term clinical homosexual, which was popularized by the pioneering German psychiatrist Richard von Croft Ebing, was one of the names that were used to refer to these individuals. There were other names too. In the United States, professionals frequently made use of the phrase invert. Around the middle of the 19th century, numerous cities established what was called vice squads, and the police frequently referred to the individuals they arrested as sexual perverts. The term deviant was the language that the government desired to use, and the use of this term carried legal ramifications for anyone who wished to pursue a career in public service or the armed forces. Some of the early activists, small networks of women and men who desired community and devised ingenious tactics to defy legal and social persecution, elected to use the term homophile. These activists came up with creative ways to combat legal and social persecution. As a result of the lowering of the age requirement for participation in the draft from 21 down to 18, which took place in 1942, millions of people from all over the country, many of whom were leaving their home states for the very first time, were recruited to work in the military and for the federal government. On military bases all across the world, gays and lesbians met one another in private. They did their duty in secret because they were frightened of being court-martialed or dishonorably dismissed if they exposed their names to a new partner or comrade throughout their service. During World War I, the military began to criminalize homosexuality and developed increasingly invasive tactics to dig out so-called deviants and keep them out of the service. In 1953, homosexuality was made illegal in the civil service under President Dwight Eisenhower. The Position of Women in 1950s American Culture the 1950s marked the beginning of a new era for women in the United States. After World War II, men took over many of the roles that women held during the war. A significant number of women choose a career in housework. Wealth and discretionary income increased for the majority of households during the 1950s. There was a surge in the number of babies born across the country as more and more couples began families. After the end of World War II, there was a marked decline in the level of cooperation between the United States and the Soviet Union. The U.S. believed that communism posed a threat to democracy. To combat the spread of communism, propaganda depicting a superior America and the ideal nuclear family, in which men hold jobs outside the home and women lead fulfilled lives as housewives, was disseminated. Fear of communism and the possibility of losing one's work, family, and friends if one were suspected of treason was what led to the Red Scare, which was created by Congress's actions against un-American conduct. 
It appears that American sex was poor throughout the early Cold War era in the 1950s. It would appear that people in the United States during the early stages of the Cold War did not have satisfying sexual encounters. During this time period, numerous psychiatrists, marriage counselors, and gynecologists were concerned about the inability of women to function well in the bedroom. According to the findings of certain studies, these individuals believe that frigidity, which was primarily characterized as a woman's inability to have a vaginal orgasm with her spouse, was to blame for the dissolution of the modern marriage and family unit. During coitus, many women feel agony and repulsion. Due to rising extramarital promiscuity and the high divorce rate, this has sociological and theological relevance. Ironically, frigidity didn't affect women's sex. Dr. Wilfred C. Holson and others claim that frigid women can have orgasms. Psychotherapists know that many frigid women have orgasms or highly pleasurable near-orgasmic experiences when masturbating, dreaming, or having extragenital sexual encounters. However, during coitus, they are entirely unresponsive. Some women are cold with their husbands but can have orgasms with other guys. While Dr. Frank S. Caprio suggested that husbands had a vital part in bringing their women to orgasm, he suggested that domestic abuse or mistreatment may be a factor in frigidity. Most authors seem to place the burden of vaginal orgasm on the wife. Life. Counseling, sex coaching, or psychotherapy could fix a wife's inability to have vaginal orgasms. In the 1950s, women began using birth control tablets. In the year 1950, Sanger played a pivotal role in the process of gathering a total of $150,000 to finance the research and development of a birth control pill for women. Despite the fact that the first clinical trials of an oral contraceptive were started in 1956, women had to wait a few more years before they were free to include the pill in their sexual lives. The idea that women in the 1950s were virgins who did not engage in sexual activity until they were married is widely held as a myth by a large number of people today. The truth of the matter is, however, that in the early 1950s, 50% of all American women had already had sexual intercourse before getting married, and the pill was not the reason for greater sexual freedom at that time. Credit for that goes to dating customs that started in the 1920s. In 1950, America legalized sexual activity before marriage. Sex before marriage has been given a number of different names, including non-marital, which overlaps with adultery, youthful, adolescent, and young adult sex. These concepts are similarly vague since people have diverse ideas about what constitutes sexual activity. Prior to the 1950s, having sexual contact with another person before getting married was referred to as premarital sex. After the age of 21, both men and women in Western countries married without consideration to sex differences. The term was used instead of fornication, which had negative implications and was intimately connected to the notion and acceptability of virginity, which is defined as sexual abstinence until marriage. Hey, we appreciate your interest in our channel and encourage you to subscribe. Please leave a comment below so that we may learn more about your interests and include them in future videos.